Okay, now this is where all the magic happens. Um, you know, we've we've built our fundamentals and we built our foundation to to get to this point to where we're going to start creating the estimate. And so we can see over on the left, it's showing us like a little organizational. Uh, tree, if you will, that's given us some structure to the estimate. So we have the name of the estimate here, we have the interior, everything that's inside of the interior. We can collapse that to close it up and start adding more. You know, and those layers that were on the sketch, if you had more, like the roof, it would show. And I would, you know, if you did that, I'd probably do the roof before the interior, um, but it would show here as, as more sections. Um, so let's go ahead and keep it there. Now I also want to show you, you can manually add more grouping sections yourself up here by adding here. Now let's say I wanted to do like, um, you know, like a second floor, for example, okay? And I wanted to add another one, but I wasn't sketching it, and I wanted to you know, manually sort of create this, then I can add again, and let's do like a bedroom, oops. You can manly, manually create it. If I put append, like I just did, it will just create another section, like another folder underneath it. Um, if I put attach, then it'll put it underneath, okay? If I clicked insert, it would put it above. So, but now I've got a bedroom. Now it's not sketched, as you'll notice, because I didn't sketch it in, in sketch. But I mentioned that before, I used to use, uh, uh, I never use sketch. I would manually do the dimensions. There is a way to do that. I don't want you to get in the habit of doing that, but it is a workaround. Um, you know, like me, I was using this method for far too long, and then I finally started to use sketch um, because I, I almost had to on a on uh, bigger projects. And what I found is sketch is so much easier, saves so much time, and I can't believe that I was wasting so much time all those years by using a different method. This is the method, though, just to show you how it works. Um, you can double click on that, and then you can go ahead and manually create the dimensions. So you would say add, I haven't even done this in a while, so it's hard to think. So it, the default is the, that it creates a room as a box, right? So with a flat ceiling. So first, if you needed to change that um, to a sloped ceiling, as we have in this instance, then that's what you do, right? Like tall room, tall wall there, um, short wall, sloping wall length, non-sloping wall length, right? And you just kind of fill them in. Remember the wall or the missing walls and doors and windows? Here they are, click on missing walls and you can put them in here. I haven't done it in so long, it's like I, can't, I can hardly remember how to do it. Um, but let's see, box. So you do box, let's say it's 12 by 12 with an eight foot high, and then missing walls. There we go. So like you put in a door, say I'm gonna put in a door that's uh, two feet six by six feet eight high, right? And then you have to select, see this is for window, that's for like, um, you know, like a cabinet, like an underneath cabinet, and this is uh, a door, and that would be missing wall. So you can see why I'm kind of using those, sing those symbols on my own drawings, because I'm still used to doing it this way. So that's how you put a door in, boom. But if you use that method, where's that door at, right? So it's not really accurate, uh, an accurate way of doing it. It's not the best method, um, but it is a way of doing it. You, you can you know, put your windows and doors in that way, and then boom, right? And then you've got a dimensioned bedroom. Okay, now I can go into the bedroom and do what I was showing you before, which is WC, um, you know, and it, and it has those, those calculations, right? Now, I'll show you something else. If I did not do the dimensions and I added a room like this, just without, and I, and I did not go, oops. Um, try that again. I appended it versus attaching it. So let's say I did a bedroom and I attached it and I did not do the dimensions, okay? So I go in here and there are no dimensions, okay? If I do WC, look what it says, zero. So now I've got to do math, right? I've got to do 32 for one sheet times five sheets, right? Now I've got to do math, and, and so that's why you've got to sketch it out, man. It's gonna save you so much time 
to sketch it because to do the math, like to figure out how much the walls and ceiling are just to paint this room would take a very long time. You'd have to get much more in, by way of measurements than, than just going through and measuring just the walls like I showed you. So definitely you want to use um, sketch, okay? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this because we don't need it, all right? And, oops. Let's get rid of this, get rid of that. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create this estimate much in the same order as the way that the insurance company has it. So I'm going to create a roof section and I'm going to click it and drag it so that it goes above that interior section, right? I'm gonna let this interior section um, show up after the roof, after the elevations, after the siding and all of that, right? And so let's get into the roof. And, and I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna do it in the same sort of direction or pattern order that the insurance company. So what they have is they have the roof first, right? And then and then they have the front elevation, right elevation, rear elevation, left elevation, rear deck, and that's it, okay? So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna do the roof, front, right, rear, left elevations, deck, um, deck, and then I'm gonna put in the other structures like the fence, and that little greenhouse that we found, and anything else, right? And, I'm, and, and then I'm gonna put the interior. So let's go, let's, let's set it up that way. I'm gonna put in the roof, and then, now if you wanna continuously add sections, just check this little box here. And so I'm gonna put in the roof, I already have that. Now I'm gonna put in the front. See, it already knows, it has these, it auto-populates because it's used to these terms, right? And so I'm gonna put in the roof, Append, and I'll, put, I'll go back and put the interior in underneath later. So right elevation, like I'll drag that interior in place later. Right elevation, rear elevation, left elevation, right? And then rear deck, and then let's say fence, and then let's say, um, nah, let's say greenhouse. And then let's just unclick that and finish it right there. And then we'll take the interior and drag that in after greenhouse. And then I also always add to my estimates a general conditions section. And that's where I'm going to put my dumpster and various other things like that. Okay? And that's basically how this estimate is going to shape up. Okay? So I'm going to have my roof, front elevation, right elevation, rear elevation, left elevation, rear deck, fence, greenhouse, interior with the master bedroom and general conditions. And that's the order that the estimate is going to go. That's how it's gonna flow when it's all said and done. Asterisk, save it, okay? Now, let's jump into the roof. Now, in the, so basically, in Xactimate, the main things that we're using here is you've got the category and the selector here. So I'm not messing with the miscellaneous items, I'm not messing with attachments, I'm not messing with this salvage restored thing. In the category, this is where we have everything in construction, all categories in construction, right? I mean, just to, for example, we are in the roofing category, okay? So let's find roofing. But just look, when you get some time, go through your Xactimate and just look to see how many different categories there really are. I mean, we've got drywall, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, painting, mirrors. Uh, we've got a lot of information here. One of the things that we'll work out of is the um, WTR category, which is the water mitigation category. We've got wallpaper, window. I mean, just in windows, we have like 
you know, all different types of windows, like aluminum, we have um, uh, vinyl windows, wood windows, um, you know, all different types of specialty windows. And, and so, but again, in this instance, we're going to go from the RFG category, which is roofing. Um, you know, I, I know that code, which is roofing. So, like, if I want to, I just type in RFG and I go on. After, as you get going, you're just going to have to memorize those codes. You know, say, so how do I learn those codes? Just by doing it, rep repetition, right? After a while, you learn that the roofing category is RFG. And so, if you know that already, you won't have to select this to find it, right? If you already know uh, that RFG is roofing, then you can just type in RFG and skip this, you know, having to click open the drop down box. But inside of the roofing category are all of these items here. Extremely vast, right? Like just the roofing category just by itself is extremely vast, right? I mean, you've got everything you can think of basically in roofing is in this category. And so like you're, you know, it can be a bit daunting, a bit intimidating, and you think of how many different, you know, items there are in there. Um, but, but again, we're mainly just using several of the same items most of the time, and you're gonna learn these things by repetition. You know, and I've got uh, sample Xactimate estimates for three tap shingles, composition shingles, you know, various different types of roofing estimates already sort of um, as, as examples, sort of template files that are included in the training course that you can, you can use that I want you to use. Um, but really, by the way that you learn your way through these categories and what's all in the category and what is available for use is by doing, you know, by doing it over and over and over again, repetition, right? So now we're going to use, um, I like to say too, when, when I build my estimates, especially on the roof, I'm building the estimate in the order of the job, right? So not, we're not going to build it like the, like the adjusters typically do. The adjusters are going to go in and say, remove and replace shingles, remove and replace accessories, remove and replace, you know, and, the, and it's all sort of out of order. And so the, the, way, the way I like to put some structure to my estimates and build it in the order of the job. And there is some... Um, reasoning and strategy behind that, which I'll cover uh, in a bit more detail as we go on. So, but look, we're going to, everything in this section, in this uh, roof, we're going to be taking out of the roofing category, okay? And so, it's, we're dealing with a three-tab shingle. Now, knowing that, you know, like, like just after, out of doing it, I know that the three-tab shingle is essentially going to be 240. That's the code, right? Um, if I want to, that's including felt. If I want it without felt, 240s. Okay. Again, you you learn that by doing it. Okay. But but let's say I didn't know, and, and I have to find it. Okay. So three tab, it's right up here at the top. Three tab, 240, including felt. Now the insurance companies um, will use a lot the one without felt. I'm going to use including felt. But now you see when I select it that it's automatically going to have the and signal here. So that's saying remove and replace, right? Well, I mentioned before, I'm gonna do it in the order of the job, so I'm actually gonna remove it only. And I'm gonna do remove, 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 all the way down the estimate in the order of the job. Okay, but just wanted to show you a few things. If you could do remove here, you can do um, replace only, you can do re uh, remove and replace, you can do material only, and everything you do, every time you're changing that, the per unit item price is showing here, right? So material only, install only, and it's showing you right there, right? Now if I put remove and replace, and I go over here, I can click on this, um, click for detail, this is the item image, and if there is an image, it'll usually show here, um, tags, Unit price, it's showing you what the unit price is. Um, mounts, you won't really use it, you won't use depreciation. So really, you're only gonna use the item image and unit price over here, okay? Now, item image, there's not an image in this case, but you can click for detail. This is called the illustration, and it'll show you what exact where is saying that should be included for that item, right? So it includes 
three tab shingles, 15 pound roofing felt, roofing nails, uh, and installation labor. Dump fees, hauling, disposal, and labor to remove composition shingles and felt. Qualities of three tab with 25 year shingle, class A fire rating, weight between blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. Um, reference, exact, exact where publishes prices as close to the midpoint of the market as possible. So it's kind of given some reasoning and some some like foundation as to how they came up with these prices, right? Some explanations. Uh, it's it's green. Lead considers light colored shingles to be green when meeting the requirements for heat island reduction credit. Um, there's a couple little notes here. Roof stock, roof stock price. You know, so big description as to how these things go down, right? So like if, if haul off is to be estimated separately or if the removal is being estimated with a dumpster, DMO dump or other equipment, use item RFG. R so it's like saying, you know, like, hey, um, and let me, let me break this down a little further. Let's change it to just remove only, right? And then now let's click the description. So now it's just showing you only what it includes to remove, all right? And it's got that bit about the dumpster. So remove. So it's saying basically that, you know, <laughs> you don't use a dumpster item, okay, if the contractor is using like his own equipment, like his own hauling trailer or whatever, right? Um, that's you can really we can we can have a whole session about that right there, right? But I'm always so it's it's saying though that it includes the removal of the shingles and felt. Right, but what you'll see is you'll you'll put a dumpster in there, you know, <laughs> on the job, and they'll say, no, you don't need a dumpster because the dumpster's already included. But the dumpster's only included for the shingles and the felt. And what I always say is, yeah, I'll give you it. It should say nails also. Like I'm I'm assuming that it also means the nails that 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 the shingles uh, were installed with and that the felt was installed with, right? But it does not include you know, the, the, the dumpster for drip edge and valley metal and flashing and vents and pipe jacks and drywall and all the other stuff on the job, right? I mean, so you have to factor that in. It, what, I, wanna, I wanna use Xactimate's rules. I wanna use the insurance company rules. Use their standards, even if I don't agree with them, right? And so I'm using their logic to come up with a reason why I need the dumpster. Look, yeah, I get it. It includes some dumpster, um, you know, it includes hauling away for uh, the shingles and felt, but not for everything else. So I've added a dumpster accordingly. And also, we're not using a haul away trailer, we're using an actual dumpster. And so, and, and, and it tells you, you know, if you're using the contractor's own equipment, then you wouldn't also charge for a dumpster. But what if you are? Like it's already factoring in some money for dump, right? So it gets real complicated. You can sort of go down many different rabbit holes with that. Um, but I, but I want to show you the basics, right? So now look, if you go into the price tab, you can quickly see, and if you haven't already heard, there's a lot of controversy over this, right? In, in the sense that to remove shingles off of the roof, you know, Xactimate's default option is DMO for the trade. Now that's wrong, because that's saying that that's you're, it's just general demolition. Okay, and it's essentially coming right down to it is saying that you're not going to use a roofer to take off of off the roof items. You're just going to use a general labor demo crew for that, right? And so if you're not using a general labor demo crew and you're using the same guys, the same roofers, then technically this should not be DF, DMO. It should be RFG to stand for roofing. All right, now if you look at the remove price here, it's 5587. Now if we change that to make it accurate, then it's going to be RFG and it's going to change that all the way to 170.56. Let's look at that again, all right? So let's DMO, 55.87, RFG, 170.56, okay? So now I'm going to use RFG for all of my removal items. Now, this only comes into play on removal items, and these are labor items, all right? They're, they're not items with material because they're not replacement, right? So they're, they're removal items. Now, let's look at this estimate. Um, we're, we're going to work off of these photos 
to build this estimate. And we're going to work out, we're going to, let's, let's start with the drone photos. And let's get an overview of this roof. All right. So this will kind of give you, that's why I like to do these drone overview, because this will show you everything all in kind of one snapshot of what's on that roof. Okay. And you can see we've got some uh, ridge vents. Ridge vent shingle over style. Um, and then so let's pull up that estimate and see how they have factored that in also. See if they've included that. See, and they have. So we've got the ridge vent. Now, okay, so one quick thing is that they're missing the ridge caps for the remainder of the ridge, right? So you've got. Um, the total ridge length is 126, and you've only got 100. So that's for the vent for the for the ridge vents. Okay, so it's 100. And, let's say 107 linear feet for ridge vent. I, I'm pointing that out because what's the first thing you would remove? It would be the ridge vent, right? So 107. Let's do that item first. So we're going to do roofing, and now we're going to go um, ridge vent. So it's vent, just because I know the code, but or you can look it up. And one way you can search is you can do you can do a search, right? And you can find it this way. But if I will tell you, if you do the search up here, you know, if if you don't have the exact wording right, it won't show you. You have to have the wording exactly right. Um, if you do the search here, then you could be a little off. Okay, like you can be you can. It'll give you all the items from multiple categories, right? But there's the continuous ridge vent, aluminum. Um, I'm not looking, I'm looking for ridge cap actually, my bad. Um, and there it is for composition shingles, right? There it is. Um, and then I'm not doing remove and replace, I'm just doing removal only, okay? And you can see this one is correct. Why is that? Crazy, right? Like some of them it has RFG correct and some of them it doesn't. And so it just shows you why it's, why it's so messed up, how they have this set up. So but anyway, I'm, I'm going to go with 107, all right, for the calculation. It's remove only. It's set on the RFG. Okay. That's the first thing that comes off. Now I'm going to do the ridge vent for where, uh, I'm going to do the ridge cap for where the ridge vent is not, right? So now I need to put in ridge cap. Um, so like if you wanted to, I know the code, but again, if you wanted to search you can do, you can ridge cap, ridge cap, and there it is, right? So it's set at a remove and replace, but I just want to do remove only. And it was, total is 125 minus 107, essentially, right? So it's, and it's already set at RFG. You could do some math. You can ask uh, Xactimate to do some of the math. Oops. 125 minus 107. So there's the remainder of the ridge caps that should also be calculated in because they're, they're, you got to have caps for where the vent is not, right? So um, it's removal only, uh, RFG, okay, put that in. Obviously screwed that up because that was supposed to be a ridge vent. <laughs> uh, vent. Ridge vent, remove, remove, and see the ridge vent has DMO. So you got to save that to RFG, much different. Okay, so we're doing the ridge vent first, then the ridge cap. Now we'll do the shingles. So RFG, 240. We are going to, we are going to, and see like the insurance company will put without felt sometimes, but you are removing the felt, right? And so removal, DMO, change that to RFG. And we have a total of 38.23, removal 38.23 squares. That's how much we're removing only RFG, boom. Okay, now follow more, what do they have? See, they have next, they have like uh, accessories and things like that, right? So, but what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to, and this roof is not steep, it's not a, um, high charge. And normally here, if it was steep, 
my next item would be removal of the shingle steep or high, right, or both. Um, that would be next, but it's not steep, it's not high, and so, um, let's see. Okay, and let's go on to the, let's go on to the valleys. We've got 56 linear feet of valleys on this. And let's go RFG. And again, we could do a search in here for valley, right, to find the valley metal. Um, or if we get going, we can learn the codes, right? So VMTL. Change it to remove only, change this to RFG only. We've got 56 linear feet, okay. And then let's go with, uh, let's see, how about the, we have, um, okay, how about the, uh, we'll do the sidewall flashing. We have uh, 44 Halo sidewall, we've got 44 linear feet of that. RFG four. All right, now let's do RFG and let's do the drip. All right, and we'll do remove only. Change that to RFG, and we've got a total of 327. We'll call it. I'll just round up to the next feet, and technically you should round up to the next 10 feet. Or 12 if it comes in 12 feet sticks, right? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna just go more accurate with what it actually is. Um, and it's set on RFG. Okay, great. And then let's look at what comes next on here. Okay, so now let's look at the accessories. What I like to do is I uh, is put the accessories. Um, like the, the, the turtle vents, the furnace vents, uh, pipe jacks, uh, things like that, uh, the, the satellite dish, skylights. I want to put all of those things in the middle of the estimates. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do remove, 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 and sort of sandwich those things in the middle, and then replace, replace, replace. And, and also one other thing that I forgot, and this will be a good thing to show you, you know, if you forgot something and you need to insert something above. Um, something I, I actually want appearing at above these items is going to be the gutters. And we have confirmed uh, damage to the gutters. And so the gutters are going to be in the SFG category, uh, soffit fascia gutters. And in that category, you have, you know, all of your gutters, fascia, soffit, um, you know, anything related, just a ton of things, gutter guards, uh, downspouts, and actually downspouts are just with the, you know, it's down gutter or downspouts, it's one item. Uh, you might see on adjuster's estimates where they're separate, uh, you just have to modify the wording. I could show you how to do that also. Um, but you have, um, you know, trim, things like that, different types of soft, soffit, uh, wrap, custom fascia, we use that a lot. Um, so in this instance, we're just looking for gutters. Right, and so you know, if you type in gutter, you, you, there's a lot of items in here that has the word gutter in it, so you're going to see a lot. But it's G U T A is the code. That's um, just regular standard gutters up to five, five inch. And you know, if you just one thing to note, if you look at the illustration, you, you should see a picture most of the time on the illustration. Some of them you don't. The ones we've been looking at before, as examples, didn't have a picture, but this one has a picture. And you click it open. There's a lot of information about it there. So it kind of shows you everything that a gutter uh, item includes, right? And so it includes like gutter or downspout fittings, caulk, and labor, right? And then you move on down. It may be seamless. Each downspout fitting in metered corners should be accounting for. Um, for example, each downspout fitting equals one lineal foot. Uh, longest measurements are typically used. Uh, you know, so what I wanted to point out is that a lot of folks will try to include like the elbow and other components. You don't need to do that. It's not, you're not really supposed to. You are supposed to include it in the measurements, but you don't actually need to go ahead and put, you know, gutter and then plus elbow and other, you know, items. You just put gutter downspout with the total linear foot, uh, feet to account for 
all that. And I realize, you know, that a lot of times, you know, it may be seamless, that that's, that's frustrating, right? Because a lot of times to get a seamless gutter contractor out, you know, it's, it's more than these uh, items here. So you, you may need to add other, other items for additional layer, uh, labor and things or equipment and things. But, but, but generally speaking, and also this, this uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, this includes um, like all of your normally painted gutters. Right, so like this, this includes, um, you know, if it, if it's white or brown or some of your normal colors that come with the with the paint, like you wouldn't actually also need to include painting. Um, but if it is a painted gutter, and you can see that there, if the if the gutter that's existing now is painted, then you of course want to use this item, and then plus painting of the gutters and downspouts. Now I will say that if we were just doing detaching and resetting of the gutters and downspouts, any time that I do an estimate that includes detaching and resetting the gutters and downspouts, I'm also going to include an item for the painting of the gutters and the downspouts because the logic is that they're going to get scratched during the process. And so I would, I would put that item and then I would include a footnote that describes why underneath. Okay, so in this case, we have confirmed damage to the gutters and downspouts, um, a, a whole lot of them, not all of them, but most of them. And so we're going to go ahead and include all of them here. And so we have, uh, I've gotten my measurements sort of... Uh, together here. And then I'll one, one other thing. Uh, let's go over here, item image and then unit price. Let's change it because look what it has. It's got DMO. So it's, it should be the siding trade and so we'll change that because it had DMO. So what was it before? 50 cents, right? And now 112 to remove per linear feet, right? And so what I like to do on this, keeping consistent with everything else, is I'll just do the remove here, right? And let's see, I've got my numbers. It's um, one cool thing about Xactimate too, you can just sort of do your math right in the box here. So I'm gonna do my total perimeter minus, and then use a little formula, like who told you we would've still needed this stuff in school. But to show you kind of some things you can do, so I'm going to take I'm going to take the total perimeter and then I'm going to subtract three areas uh, from the total perimeter. I'm going to subtract uh, 80 feet four inches, uh, 24 feet, and 14 and a half feet. I'm going to add those three numbers up and subtract that total from the perimeter. And how you do that is add some parentheses here: 80 feet four inches plus 24 feet plus 14 feet six inches or you could do you know 14.5 and then close the uh, parentheses all right so this is what it looks like you've got 327 minus 80 everything uh, open parentheses 80 uh, 4 24 14 6 and that gives me the 208 17. so that's my total um gutter down uh count and then my total um downspouts are 60. So I just do plus 60. And you got 268.17. So I was just adding up all of my gutters, and then there's my downspouts, and then boom. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing remove. Now I want this to appear at the top. So you, you can just highlight the item by clicking on it one time, left click, and then hold down left click and drag it up to the top. And you can see that that solid line is going to kind of indicate where it's going to drop if I let go. And so I want it all the way at the top, boom. Now, you can see these lines over here and the numbers, 14, 1, 4. These are numbering the items in the estimate like in, in, in order, okay? And that should say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, all the way down. Now, we've got an asterisk up here, so let's save it. But what we can do to change those numberings, there's, there's multiple ways of doing it, but the, the quickest way I like to do it is to go over here and do print, make sure that the report is lined up, but down here, resequence line numbers, just click it one time, left click, resequence has been completed, and you can see now over on the left side, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That, that's how you fix that, uh, those numbering of the lines, right? Okay, now, 
since we're here, let's look at how everything's stacking up so far. Click view, and we remember the cover page. Now we have stuff starting to populate over here on the left side. Let's click on the next page and see how it's looking. So we got remove gutter, remove ridge vent, remove ridge cap, remove shingles, remove valley, remove sidewall, remove drip edge, right? And so now let's go ahead and keep on going. And by the way, there's how our sketch looks. Looks nice, right? It's presentable um, and it's accurate. So, all right, let's go back into the, let's we can just close this out to get back to the estimate. We can just close that out. All right, asterisk up there to save the resequencing of the line items. And so I've got the removal of the gutter at the top. And then when we close out this roof section, I'll end it with the replacement of the gutters at the end, okay? And so, all right, let's keep on going. We've got the furnace vents. They have uh, two of those. And so there is a, now that item can, has to be found in the HVAC, the heating, venting, vent, and air conditioning uh, category. And the, there's a whole bunch of, you know, that's where you find your AC items and duct work and all that stuff in there. Um, but we have a little shortcut here because we know the, the code, right? Um, and that's what CP8, and if it was a six or if it was a five, right? But in this case, it's an eight. And you can see again that the DMO is wrong. And in this case, it also has HVAC. Let's change both of those to roof because we're not going to bring out an HVAC contractor. And if you didn't change it, it would spit out a labor minimum at the end automatically for a HVAC contractor, you know, and that's not accurate. So let's take it out. All right. So we have two of those and let's leave it at the R and R because we're going to start sandwiching things into the middle. Okay. And then let's go on to the next item. We have a um, 11 turtle vents. So that's from the RFG category. Vent T is the item. So over here it has the RFG correct and it has you have to change that. And okay, there. Now, gonna, uh, we're gonna, after we're done with these, I'm gonna go back in and insert footnotes on a whole lot of these items. And I'm also gonna do a further breakdown and explanation of what to do about this RFG versus DMO situation. Huge controversy, a lot of debate going on in the industry about DMO versus RFG. And I've been testing it and number testing it for quite a while now. And I'm going to show you what I do and how I deal with it, right? Um, because, and I think it's the, really the, only, the best chance for success um, right now at this, at this very time in the industry. And, that, and it could change, right? So and we're at the, sort of towards the end of 2018. Um, let me go up there and save it because it's a matter of habit. All right, now we go on to the next item. Let's look at what that is. And all right, let's deal with the chimney for now because I noticed they have, they have the flue cap, which is good because the drone did pick up damage on the flue cap, but it also picked up damage to the, um, the uh, chase cover. Um, but it did not, I noticed in this estimate, have anything about the chimney flashing. Or did it? Let's just double check. No, it does not have the chimney flashing. So let's put it in. Uh, that comes from the RFG and it's uh, FLCH. And so you have like the chimneys, you can see, and this is just one of many different things that insurance companies do, right? They might use small or the average, right? But I believe that's a large chimney. Right, and you can see the differences. And, and a lot of times the insurance company won't choose the large chimney. Um, and let's see you know, what a large chimney actually is. And so it doesn't really indicate, right? It doesn't really have the sizes. So you, so you can't really um, uh, differentiate what's small, medium, or large. It's kind of a judgment call, right? Um, so, but I've seen a lot of chimneys and let's just look. I mean, let's look and see what that chimney looks like. I mean, we look, there's the chimney. I mean, to me, that's a pretty good sized chimney, right? And I mean, let's, let's go and look at some of these other photos from the ground. Let's just take a look. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good sized chimney. I mean, that, that's a large chimney. Um, 
And I also think there might be another problem, which is the uh, cricket and saddle. Like, that's probably going to be required. Um, but they can find out more info on that when they get into the build. Let me just double check. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they're going to have to add a, a, a cricket and saddle to the other side. I think we can go ahead and put that into the estimate also. I mean, specifically because in their local amendments, the, the Park County, I mean, specifically I remember addressing this. Yeah, there it is. A cricket or saddle shall be installed on the ridge side of any chimney or penetration more than 24 inches wide. So there you go. I mean, that, what do you think? You guys tell me. I mean, like, so, whoops. So, more than 24 inches wide? Yeah, I'd say so. So, we have to put a cricket and, and saddle on the ridge side. Um, so, we'll put that in there too, um, since we noticed it. But for now, let's make sure we have the uh, chimney. Let's change that to RFG. We'll add a footnote in there shortly. But, and then also put the, um, I just want to get you guys familiar with search in both ways. You can just put flu in there, flu cap, and just go down and select on it and make sure you change everything from the, from the HVC to the RFG, RFG, right? And then you can just do, like, for example, chase, oops, chase. I should pull up chase cover, sheet metal, fireplace chimney. Look at that, $449.83. That's a pretty good size item that they're missing, and it should be even more than that, right? So let's see what comes out when we change it to the right settings, and now it's five seventy-seven forty-seven. Um, you know, that's let's not miss five seventy-seven forty-seven from the estimates, right? And then now, um, so I'm not going to put in the uh, the cricket and saddle just yet because uh, that's just a replacement only item. So I want to deal with something else first. Let's deal with, um, could have swore there are pipe jacks, right? Let's, let's take a look. <sighs> let's go back to the uh, ground photos. Let's just kind of do a walk around real quick and see what else we might be missing from here. So we have to, oh, we've got to get the skylight in there. We know that. Got the turtle. Okay, there's some pipe jacks. There's two right there. So they just totally missed the pipe jacks, didn't they? There's two pipe jacks there. And you know what? The flue cap that they were referring to could be that right there and not the one on... Yeah, I bet you that's what it is. Let's look at the back. Um, because it's probably missing... They probably weren't referring to the one up on the chimney, but we'll see. Um, to double check everything, kind of do a walk around. This is why I like to get the photos from the ground first, like a general walk around, where you can see the whole roof, you know, from the photos. And so you sort of go through and do your count. Of course, I also have my drone uh, footage. The thing that I'm going to deal with in a second is the sol or these solar panels. And you can see on the back side, the solar panel um, conduit comes down and attaches onto the wall here. And we have to do pressure cleaning and, and uh, staining to this wall. So we're gonna go ahead and take all that stuff off, right? I'm gonna get into the solar panels in a second, but that's what we're looking at there. Um, let's just walk on around, keep walking around the building. There's the solar panels I was referring to. And let's just see if there's anything else on this roof that it's missing. We've got the satellite dish. We'll deal with that also. That's really it. So it's hard to tell. I mean, they've got those two vent. Um, hmm. They've got those two vent storm cap and collar things. And one of the things is too. We should have a piece of flashing right here. Like diverter flashing required by code at the change of pitches. So let's put one there and we'll put one on the other side. So one, two, three, one right there.
four. Is it the same, is it the same one? No. No, it's not the same one. Okay, four. Um, and then one more. One more on the other side. Yes, one more over here. Okay, so a total of five diverters. Just since we're here in the front, it looks like they're using the two vent caps here, right? But that's clearly a flu cap. That's a flu cap. So I'm going to go back over here. And I'm going to change this to one. And I'm going to change this to two. And also I noticed a typo a few moments ago. That should be 20. It's not 44. And... Da, 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 da. Okay, let's deal with the pipe jacks. RFG, FL, PIP, and let's change to the RFG. We found two of those. Okay, and then let's deal with the satellite dish. Um, and we're going to do dish reset. Um, this should be ELS. That's our ELE. At some point, that used to be ELE, <laughs> and now they changed it to labor. So, you know, it's 42. And actually, you should make it roof, right? 145.06. See how they get you? I mean, do you think an electrician to come out there <laughs> is going to be less? Um, labor, $42. I mean, give me a break, right? So now I'm not saying that this is going to be approved like this, but this is where we start. We get it accurate first. And once you get it accurate, then you can work your way down from there. Like if they want you to back down off of that, then you can consider it later. But at least we're starting from the highest position um, and, the, and the most accurate position. You have, you're, you're starting at the highest position, but you can justify it because it's correct, right? You're going to have a roofer do that work. You're not going to have anybody else do it, so you're going to have a roofer do it. Um, and then if you have to, you know, knowing that, you, you know, if you've done many of these, you know you're going to have an issue with, you know, trying to get it aligned and calibrated. So you want to align and calibrate it. Again, a laborer is not going to do that. A roofer is going to do that. And look at that, 435.18 versus 126.49. Now, reality is, if they approve this item, that's the money that they're probably going to approve it at. Like, they're probably not going to give you the full 435.18. And again, I'm going to cut, I want you to bookmark that thought because I'm going to cover this RFG DMO logic and, and my strategy for using it uh, in just a bit. But, but, for, you know, for now, just mark that down as a bookmark in your brain. <laughs> All right, so we've got the, da the digital satellite dish, detach and reset, um, align and calibrate. Oh, yeah, the, the diverters. Diverter, we're going to install those. I think they're kick-out diverters. Let's double-check. Yeah, that's what we want right there. So, and we're going to do just install only because they don't have any now and put five of those in there stall only okay we need those and then we need a cricket saddle and da, 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 da. use that one right there and we need one of those okay see now we are going through and installing and oh yeah well, let's deal with the uh the um, solar panels first. Okay, so let's go up here and do just solar. Well, actually, let's, let's do that uh, another way. Let's let's go through and search the category where the solar stuff is found. It's ELS, Electrical Special Systems, and then you can just type in solar and see all the items they have available for solar panels. Not much, right? Um, and then so there are 27 solar panels in total that need to be detached and reset. Um, according to the adjuster report. However, one of those solar panels is damaged. 
So technically 26 have to be detached and reset, and one has to be replaced. So let's deal with the one that has to be replaced first. Um, you know, I mean, the description for this is pathetic, right? Like just one single, you know, uh, solar panel. So you're, you're, and it doesn't really say, you know, which total solar panel, I mean, what, what kind of solar panel, how big it is, really much of anything at all other than that it's 60 to 150 watts, okay? So let's just go ahead and change the, yep, got to change that to, Let's go with that, what they have on the, uh, for the replacement, removal and replace, one solar panel, $1,445, right? So now let's go back in, ELS, and, oops, go in here, and we'll do the solar, and detach and reset is the item we want. Electrical. Okay, we're gonna do 26 of those, and look at that, 57, 77, 98, just to detach and reset, all right? Now, but I'm gonna show you something else, like that's typical. Uh, that's what you would see normally on adjuster reports. So like if you go over here and look on his, on his report, he has detach and reset 27 of these, and it's 6,000 bucks, and that's a pretty good idea. I mean, that's more, that's almost as, like half as much as the shingles, right? So, and you look at that and you're like, wow, that's pretty good money for, you know, just to detach and reset these solar panels. But, you know, if you've had to do it, you know it costs a lot of money to get it done. And you can only use specific people to get it done, right? Um, so, you need to make sure you get paid for this. But this is an item. Now, let me, let's, let's, first off, let's look and see what does this include, the detach and reset? build a foundation for the next thing I'm going to say. So it's labor costs to disconnect and unbolt a solar panel, mounting clips, rails, to store on site and reinstall at a later time. This item does not include detaching and resetting of the roof mounting brackets, boot flashing, wiring, converter, or battery, <laughs> all that other stuff that we saw on the roof. Remember all that other stuff? Typically roofing contractors will flash around the existing mounting hardware. Um, we've got to take this hardware off and put it back on though. So, and they've already acknowledged as such, right? So, at least that these have to be detached and reset. And then we have another one that's actually damaged. So, but the thing we have to do is also account for the solar panel array, okay? So, and this, this is what we want right here. Boom, that's what we want right here. So the solar panel array And what does that include? Includes solar panel or panels, solar inverter, 60 inch wire or 60 foot wire, two panel, mounting racks, an installation label for labor for roof mounted grid tied system, labor cost to remove a solar panel array and to discard in a job site waste receptacle. Uh, excludes battery quality 200 to 350 watt photo. Volta I don't even, voltaic, I gotta learn how to say that word, right? We're gonna just be saying a lot more of that. Uh, panels set up in an array. Now, 200 to 350 watt panels, okay? So, I remember seeing something. Such as this. 500 is the maximum, 350. Let's see what the other item says. No, it's the same, okay. Just wanted to double check and see if we might be able to even use the other one. Um, but okay, what we're gonna do, there's no detach and reset here, so we're gonna make our own detach and reset. And it's per watt. Right? So like, it, it's, it's per watt. So it's not per panel, it's per watt. It's not $7.38 per panel, it is per watt. And that's one of the things I see, even when people use the solar panel array, like I'll see it on adjuster reports, and they'll just only reflect, like in this case, 27, right? And that would not be what we need, $199. So like in this case, what we need to do 
and it would be even less for detach and reset. So first, we're gonna make our own detach and reset by saying remove, okay? And we're doing remove, so let's go and do it right. And it had ELE first, that's what we're gonna use. Um, and because we are going to use a specific uh, contractor for this and then we're going to use 500 watts and then we're going to use ELS same code that we just used SORP okay and we'll change this to ELE keep that consistent and we're going to do install only which is right here install only and 500 and you can see that that item right there is three thousand dollars I mean, plus o and p thirty six hundred dollars and to remove it is seven hundred and eighty you know that's an additional forty three forty four hundred dollars in addition to the eighteen hundred dollars for the broken one and then the sixty nine hundred dollars for the uh, detaching and resetting the other twenty six like, you know, if you do this stuff correctly, that's the way it should be. Um, and we'll put in some good footnotes in there to also uh, account for, you know, why that is and refer to the photos. And that should be punched through. Um, so, but that's where it should start from. And that's how you would handle solar panel, uh, solar panels and solar panel arrays and save that we can get more specific too we can break down all the boots uh, all the flashing for each one all the electric electrical conduit but it does include up to 60 feet um, conduit for the uh, the solar panel array and you know various boots and flashing and things so I think that ought to cover but I think that's more accurate than what they had okay so let's uh, let's go ahead and also sandwich this stuff and you can you can select multiple by um, by clicking one item to highlight it left click one time and then control hold down the control and then tap the next one left click tap the next one left click tap the next one left click left click let go of the control button and then tap one more time left click but don't let go and drag it to wherever you want to put it so I'm going to put it in this case like in with the accessory stuff and and then we're building back flashing uh, satellite and cricket okay now another thing we want to do is let's cover ice and water shield so that's under the RFG category and the code is IWS ice and water barrier and then we also have um, like if you're down in Florida for example there's high temp ice and water barrier so what we're going to do is I want to cover ice and water and how you how you would you would do that. Okay, so in this case we have a total of uh, let's see two eight two we have two o eight point seven two so about two o nine in eaves. Okay, so we want to take our e let's let's open it up with parentheses. Okay, so we're going to take two o nine eaves. Now it's the eaves times six, okay, oops, times six, right? And that gives you 12 foot. Now, too many people, adjusters and contractors included, just use the eaves times three. And you know, when you look into the code on this, and we're gonna attach the code, and we can, let's look at it now. Like if you look at the code on this, and we are in 2012, and let's find the, there's the Cricut code we're gonna use. Uh, drip edge, ice barrier requirement. So let's look at this code. So like in the areas where there's been a history of ice, ice barrier consists of at least two layers of underlayment, seaming it together, um, shall be used, okay. And extend from the lowest edges of all roof surfaces to, to a point of at least 24 inches inside the exterior wall line of the building okay so that's like if you're, you're you're supposed to go from the exterior wall so like let's just visualize a little bit let's see if we can go back and look at this uh, the front of this house so I'm a visual person right so let's look at the front of this house uh, here's a good place 
Okay, so like in, they're saying that from this wall right here, two, it has to be two feet from the inside of this wall. Okay, so it's like somewhere around here, right? And then you go two feet up, okay? And then, so it's all that section, and then of course the overhang, right? But, and people, I, th I think, tend to know that part of the code, and that's what they use for, they've been told that, or whatever. Um, but what they're doing is, is they're just, they're taking that two feet, and then they're taking like another foot or less that's left over. And what they're not doing is they're not including the width of the actual exterior wall. And that's, that's a problem that, you know, they've got, that, that's a problem that I see most adjusters and contractors doing is they're not including the actual width of that wall, right? And so it's going to be at least six inches, the width of that exterior wall and everything that's included inside, I mean, maybe eight inches or more, right? And so what I'm getting at is there's no way that it's going to be less than three feet, three feet or less. And so everybody's using three feet, um, the eaves times three, when it should be the eaves times six, because you're going to have to get a second roll of ice and water, and they're three foot rolls. And I will tell you, I got a really sharp um, a female adjuster at State Farm one time, Allstate, I think, uh, checked me on this, and she found out that you could buy like 18 inch rolls of ice and water at Home Depot or something like that. So beware that that's out. I haven't seen it, but uh, I haven't been roofing with my hands in a long time. But I would say I would still use this, and if they back you down, right, um, then there's that. But again, it's not just the eaves, though. Right, so we're thinking of the eaves. It's not just the eaves, and that's why I have some parentheses here because I'm getting ready to do something else. So I'm going to do parentheses eaves times six plus more parentheses. Okay, and now what I want is the valleys 56 times three close parentheses. So now we have 1422. See how that is. And I'm going to put a detailed footnote in to describe why that is. RFG category is set. Good. Nothing wrong there. Boom. All right. We've got that. Now let's go ahead and do, oh, you know what? We forgot drip edge to remove it, didn't we? So let's do drip edge, remove, make sure it's set at the RFG. And the drip edge is 327. And that should be, oh. I guess we didn't forget it. Oh, we didn't forget it. <laughs> My bad. So let's put it back on. I like to do some other items first. Let's do the uh, sidewall flashing. Let's put that back on. All right, let's do the valley metal. Put that back on. See, so we're just doing it in the order of the job for the most part. Um, most of you have one here, Valley Metal. Okay, da 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 da. We got all that. All right, and let's do the. Um, go ahead and do the drip now. Ah, let's do the drip at later. Let's do the uh, shingles. Put the shingles back on. And we're doing replace with waste. So anytime I have hips on a roof, I'm going to go with the 15% waste factor. And you know, a lot of times they're going to say, "Oh, we we can't pay." Uh, um, 15 on this, where you go by 10, or they might start at five. Uh, either way, they're always short because also they don't want to give you the, um, you know, the starter and the ridge. And that's, by the way, I forgot the starter. I'll put that in next. Um, the, the starter and the ridge. And when you ask them about that, they say, well, that's already included in the waste. Okay, well, let's talk about the waste factor then. So I think at the end of these, you're, you're going to end up, you know, coming into that uh, conversation to where it's like, you know, sometimes they'll give you the waste and the starter and the ridge, but usually there's some kind of a compromise that has to take place at that point. So you do 15%, uh, do the number times 1.15, and it's plus, boom. And I also want to show you, let's do, let's throw the, the starter in. Oops, what's the code for starter? And we'll use this one here. Um, and then we'll, okay, so we'll put the starter in, and that number is 209, and we'll move the starter above the shingles, 
So there's no waste or, st or there's no uh, high or steep on this roof, but I want to go ahead and let's just assume that there was, right, to show you how I would deal with that. So I would go plus here, and I'll just keep it consistent with whatever my shingles were. Um, if that, if they were all, you know, uh, if the entire thing was steep, for example, or if the entire thing was high. Um, but if the number is shorter, you got to get the actual number. Um, but I would actually, you know, in, a, in, in above on the estimate, on the removal part, I would have the removal of the steep right underneath this item here, okay? And just keep it consistent. And then the next one would be, you know, the high... And just remember, if you are doing the removal, remember to change it to RFG as well. So, and then, so 3823 times 1.5. All right, so, but in this case, we'll take those off. Okay, and let's do the, um, the ridge cap. And how much did we end up coming up with on the ridge cap? We had 18 on the ridge cap and 268.7 or 107 on the ridge vent. Vent, ridge. Seven. All right, and then now let's put our drip in. And that was three twenty-seven. Okay, great. And then I also want to put in um, seal and paint the trim. Also three twenty-seven. I'll explain more. In a moment, I'm going to put in a footnote to explain that. And then remember our gutters. To do the replacement of those gutters. And that was 268.17. Could round up also, right? And anything else? Oh, skylight, right? There's two skylight domes. And there's something I also like to add along with my skylights also, but let's uh, put the skylights in. <clears throat> skylight flashing kit dome, two of those. However, look at this. They have the DMO. Let's change that, put two of those. And then let's also put in, let's do a search for um, skylight cladding. And that's what we want to use right there. And let's see, we have six linear feet on each one, so it's 12. And so we need to change this first, the DMO. And we'll do 12 linear feet. So remember, it's not one, you know, this is linear feet. So don't make the mistake of doing two of these total for two skylights. A lot of people do that. Um, so you have to do total linear feet of both of them. And so, and I'll put in a note for that too, because it's required by code. Flashing must be replaced where rusted, damaged, or deteriorated. That's the same logic that we're going to use for most of those accessories up there. Um, in our, but we'll deal with that when we get to the footnotes. All right, which is pretty much right now. We'll put these right there.